back, everybody. <laughs> Homelessness. It's an uncomfortable topic, one we often associate with people living on the streets, mental illness, and even drugs. But today, even with the surging stock market and low unemployment, homelessness is surging, and it is affecting regular working families. In fact, you don't have to go far to meet a homeless person who, not long ago, might have been your own neighbor. NBC's Jacob Soboroff has our report. This is Los Angeles' Skid Row, traditionally what homelessness looks like, but as unaffordability grows, homelessness is geographically spreading and it's starting to look a lot different too. Today, mental illness or addiction aren't the only reasons people live on the streets. More working people are ending up homeless and calling RVs home. You're almost in junior high school. Mm -hmm. So what do you hope? I mean, what are, your, what are your goals? When I grow up, I want to help all the animals that are endangered uh -huh. and living on the streets that are abandoned. Do you see a lot of abandoned animals when you're out here on the street? Yeah. Far from Skid Row, near the beach, we came across 12-year-old Carly and her single mom, Lily, who had just moved into this RV. It's hard missing the, you know, the fresh cooking, warm food, and, yeah. you know. I saw you guys at the stove. Yep. <laughs> so now you're able to get a little cooking done yep. here. I can get my coffee. With the average monthly rent in LA County now over $2,200 and rising, the area has the highest percentage of people living on the streets in America. So last week you bought this RV? Uh -huh, for $500. 500 bucks. Mm -hmm. So it's you, Lily, Carly, and then... My eldest daughter, she's 16. Our laundry over here for now. What Lily brought her daughters to California from Colorado, leaving behind a more prosperous life and the girl's father. Before they moved into the RV, they bounced around motels and then spent months living in this minivan. All three of you slept in this van? Yeah, and then we put our food in the trunk. What's it like to be living in the RV? Much nicer. Nicer than the van? Yeah. Tell me why. Well, for example, it's roomy. You can cook. It's like a smaller house, but you can just roll it. Yeah, and you can move around. It's a house with a house with wheels. So what are you doing? Are you going to school right now? Mm -hmm. Carly's homeschooled because her mom says it fits better with a mobile lifestyle. You said you're holding down a job. How much money are you making now a month? 2000 About $2,000 a month. Mm -hmm. So basically, if you spent the money that you make on housing, you'd have no money to do anything else. Yeah. Lily makes that income now working as a freelance photographer, taking pictures like these. What's the secret to making sure that you have everything you need? Be positive. Stay positive. Is it hard? No. You <laughs> seem like the most super positive person I met. <laughs> Homelessness in Los Angeles surged 23% between 2016 and 2017, and there are now nearly 58,000 homeless people in L.A. County, with the number expected to rise again this year. It's about 24 hours since I was last here. Uh, Lily told us that her other daughter, Hannah, is not working today, uh, so I came back to meet her. So this is the 16-year-old. Yeah, the 16-year-old mm -hmm. lifeguard. The 16-year-old lifeguard. Yeah. Hi. So the people that you work with at the Y, do they know that you live over here in the in the RV? Um, not really. Uh -huh. Only my manager does. I don't know if it's a good idea to tell them. How come? Because um, people these days, they're so judgmental. You think a lot of people have a wrong idea of what it means to be homeless? Mm-hmm. Why do they have the wrong idea, do you think? Maybe because they never experienced it themselves and they just see homeless people on the street. Here's my longboard. I would like a new one, but we're just trying to save money. Hannah says she's no longer surprised to see working families fall into homelessness. For all the people at home know, your homeless neighbor could be giving uh -huh. your kid a swim lesson or... It could be anybody. And it's sad that it can be anybody because of the economy we live in. Wow. Jacob Sovaroff is with us now. Jacob, unbelievable. Good to see you, Megan. What so, first of all, where do they park the RVs? Where do those go? It's part of the problem here. You know, many cities don't, haven't really caught up with the times to realize that there's such a growing difference between the haves and the have-nots, and they've outlawed these RVs on the side of the road. So cities are trying to catch up. These, this family, such a great family, great uh, young girls, um, have to move all the time in order to make sure that they're parked in a place where they're not going to have a police officer come over and actually mm -hmm. tell them, you know, get out of here. Because they have to worry about sewage, I guess some fires with respect to these things have been a problem. Exactly. I mean, it's not necessarily the, the safest place to live. No, of course not. And, and for them, they figure it's their only option. You know, they say to be able to have the luxuries of a Wi-Fi hotspot and a printer and a bunch of school books and stuff that if we lived in a, a home or an apartment we couldn't afford, that's the trade-off that they're faced with making. It's the trade-off so many people across the country now uh, find themselves having to figure out if they're going to make. They 
I know some people have landlords who own the RVs and rent the RVs. Is that their situation? Yeah, that's exactly right. Not these guys. And in fact, I talked to Lily. Uh, we talked to Lily yesterday, and she was saying she's looking at getting a bigger RV. They own it themselves. They've saved up the money to invest in that. But there, there are people, uh, because this is becoming such a big phenomenon, that are actually buying and renting RVs to homeless people across the country. The thing, that, to me, that's the most amazing about this is that this is happening in some of our most prosperous states, places like California, uh, both in Southern and Northern California. Um, where if you adjust for the cost of living, California, the most prosperous state, the sixth largest economy in the world, we talked about that, we talked about marijuana, is actually the state with the highest level of poverty. And it's like, you don't think about it that way, but when people are doing really well, there's people at the bottom of the economic ladder that are struggling more than they ever Well, because some people might actually think $2,000 a month, oh, that's pretty good. But the, the point is, when you look at the cost of living of where they are, and if she moved someplace cheaper, she wouldn't be making $2,000 a month for her photography. That's exactly right. It, it doesn't match up, so she doesn't have a lot of options. And I do think most people, when they think of homeless, they think of, they don't think of somebody who's, who's working class or middle class who, who fell on hard times. You think of people that are using drugs that are on the streets. You think of people that have not had jobs and have just sort of perpetually homeless and have been out there forever. And the reality is people like Lily um, held down a job. They moved for whatever reason, moved from one place uh, to another. They ended up in California. And the reality is $2,000 a month isn't even close. It's $2,300 a month just to rent the average apartment in L.A. County. Can the daughters go to public school? I mean, when you, they could. When you own a home, you, you pay property they taxes they, and so on. Yeah, they certainly could. They could register to vote if they wanted to. Well, when they become of legal age, they could register to vote. They the issue is, because they're so mobile, they never know where they're going to be next. So for now, uh, Lily, the girl's mom, Carly and Hannah's mom, has got them in a homeschool program. But uh, like I said, um, Hannah, the, old, the elder daughter, the 16-year-old, she works at the Y. She has a job of her own where she's going out and giving swim lessons to kids. And that's the thing. It's like, sometimes we got to stop and think, who is this you know, awesome young girl that's giving my kids swim lessons or becoming mm -hmm. a mentor? Would you ever think that she might be homeless? And the answer too often is, no, you'd never think of it. Not only that, but think about the amount of frivolity most of us have in our lives and how you know you'd spend money on stupid things that don't really mean anything to you and you see a story like that it makes you remember the value of a dollar and how well you could be spending it and how you could be helping others with it as well. That's exactly right. Thank you for being here. Thanks, Megan. Jacob Soberoff, everybody. Thanks. We'll Hello, Today fans. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking that button down there and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives.